We heard a whole string of, of pitches, right, from all these policymakers, John Lee's keynote speech, talking about directly to you that you need to look forward and, and Hong Kong is back in business. Yeah. Do you buy it? Hong, Kong's, Hong Kong never went out of business, right? Hong Kong has been great. We, we've had Center Charter, we, we've actually had a, a very good year in Hong Kong this year. We've had record, quarters with record income uh, because the underlying Hong Kong economy is, is actually very strong. Uh, of course, the COVID restrictions and the, uh, the inability for Chinese travelers, be they tourists or business people, to come into Hong Kong has had a real impact uh, on, on all sorts of things. But the underlying economy is strong. And once we get past this COVID phase, and I do think we're getting past it, uh, certainly in Hong Kong, and then I think eventually, I hope, in China, uh, Hong Kong will be back on fire. So the, H Hong Kong is fully here. Uh, but at the same time, a, a number of, you know, well, while I've been here you know, many times during the pandemic, uh, a number of, of my you know, colleagues, compatriots from, from other financial institutions, they're coming back for the first time in three years. Yeah. Uh, and they've heard a lot about problems in Hong Kong. And I think to come here and actually see, of course, there are problems. I mean, there's problems in London where I live and there's problems in New York where I'm from. Uh, but the problems are manageable and the problems in Hong Kong are manageable as well. Right. Uh, your priorities for the business now, given that, well, I guess in some ways you've done well because rates are a little bit higher, I guess, in some ways, too. Uh, and what's the outlook for the economy? What else do you need to hear from policymakers, really, too? You're right that rising rates have been very good for us, as I think it has been for most other banks. But we've had sort of record quarters of income growth, and only about half of that has come from, from interest rates. The other half has been coming from all the other good things that are happening. And of course, where Standard Chartered operates across Asia, Middle East, and Africa, uh, there, there are some real hot spots of trouble for sure, but broadly, this is where the growth is in the world. Growth is looking quite good in this part of the world, uh, and the growth outlook is good. And we're just going to continue to focus on serving our clients in these markets as they reconnect, and there are a lot of reconnections that need to happen following the pandemic and, and the supply chain reconfiguration that we're going through. Keep on doing that, and I think we'll all be fine. What do you think Hong Kong still needs to elevate its standing from here and maybe restore that, that status of, of being Asia's financial hub? Do you think the current administration is moving fast enough? Uh, they're moving fast. Uh, we know that until Hong Kong is, is completely open, the way many, well, most other countries in the world are right now, uh, that there's going to be some impediment to international travel. Uh, I think it, it, the, the small silver lining of what's happened in Hong Kong is that real estate prices have become a little bit less crazy. Uh, so it's a little bit more affordable. It's not cheap in Hong Kong, uh, but other places have also gotten quite expensive. So those things that have, have, have held Hong Kong back in the past, which is that the expense, uh, and obviously then during the COVID period, uh, are feeling a little bit better relatively. So if we can sweep the rest of that away, uh, and, and obviously we heard a very clear message from the Chinese regulators, from, from the, the CSR, CSRC, the CBIRC, uh, and the People's Bank of China, who were all very clear about the role that Hong Kong plays in the in the Chinese financial ecosystem. It is the the. I don't know the exact words, primary, major, very important financial hub, international financial hub for China. Uh, and given China's importance to world trade and to economic growth in the world, that's a really nice place to be. So I think Hong Kong has this tremendous advantage in terms of being uniquely positioned vis-a-vis -vis China. And, and Hong Kong will have to fight with the rest of the, 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 the major financial centers in Asia to, to maintain its position as a, a dominant regional financial hub. I can say as, as a bank that operates in every country in Asia, we don't mind the, the fact that everybody's trying to get better all the time. In fact, we love the fact mm. that every country in Asia, or at least many of them, yeah. are trying to get better all the time because they are getting better all the time. And, you know, this conversation around Singapore versus Hong Kong, Singapore and Hong mm. Kong, I, you know, my, my guess is if both do well, you do well as well. But have, have you had to make that allocation of staff between yeah. the two because of where it was just easier to operate? And how do you think that story goes now that Hong Kong is reopening to your no, point? We, we don't see it as a trade-off at all. Uh, I mean, of course, we have, a, we have a big operation in Hong Kong. We have a big operation in Singapore, mm -hmm. as, as we do in, 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 you know, in China and elsewhere in Asia. Uh, talent is short in the world, right? And talent is short everywhere in the world. It's short in London, New York, Paris, uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, and it's very short in, in Hong Kong and Singapore uh, because these are extremely attractive places to work. Uh, so we take the best people with the best skills and we try to put them into, into place where they can be most effective, which okay. also has something to do with where they want to live. Uh, thankfully, we've got plenty of people that want to live in Hong Kong. Even more will want to live in Hong Kong when you don't have to test on arrival, right? just to be very blunt about it. Uh, and you've got plenty of people that want to live in Singapore. So no, it's not a trade-off. It's, it's more a matter of, of, of seeing if we can just keep both going at the kind of pace that they're going all the time. Can you meaningfully hire 
sorry, a hire and, and retain talent here in the city, though, if you know, China doesn't reopen its borders with Hong Kong. You know, that whole lure of being that gateway to yeah. China hasn't quite been restored. Yeah, it was hard. It, 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 it's hard, but, but we, Hong Kong still is our gateway uh, into and out of China. So we still do a lot of our Hong Kong business is China linked. Of course, it gets harder and harder the longer people can't travel. Now, we've had many, many of my colleagues have, have ventured into the mainland, they've done whatever the quarantine routine is, they've stayed for a while. So, so it's not that the connections have been completely severed. And of course, we all have these lovely machines that you have in front of you that, that, that yes. connect us digitally. Uh, but uh, but no, clearly, the longer it goes on, the more there's a feeling of disconnection uh, that we're, we're all keen to put behind us.